Hi guys, welcome to the channel. So as a part of this video, I'm going to talk about thread.sleep in Java and this video is going to be my 25th video on my playlist Java tutorials. As a part of this video, I'm going to first talk about what exactly is thread.sleep, where to use it, how to use it, what are the advantages of using it and what are the disadvantages of using it. And then we'll move to the practical way of using thread.sleep in Java. So let's get started. So we use thread.slip in Java whenever we want our execution to wait. It may be because when you are writing automation script in Selenium with Java, you got to know that some of the pages are not loaded properly. In that case, you will give thread.slip because you want your execution to wait for some time and then proceed further. The reason you will give wait because it may be because some of the elements of the web pages are not loaded properly and that's the reason you are waiting so that the element is fully visible and then you should perform some action. So the main reason of using thread.slip is it will make your execution to wait. As the name indicates thread.slip. It will make your thread, it will make your execution to sleep for a particular period of time and that time until which your system should wait you will pass in the parameter now just understand what i'm talking in the later part of this video i'm going to show you practically how it works so just understand now your thread dot slip is used to make your execution wait for some time it may be because you got to know that all the web elements of your page are not loaded properly and now you want to wait for some time so that your web elements are loaded properly and then you perform some action. This is one way of understanding thread.slip. If you have understood this, that means you have understood this topic that is thread.slip in Java. If not, let's say that uh, you're writing a Java program and you are performing some action. With each line of your Java code, you are performing some action. Suppose that the program that you have written is for 10 lines and after executing your five lines you want to wait for five seconds so after execution of your five lines you will give wait in the form of thread.sleep in that five seconds your system will wait your execution will stop for that period of time after executing first five lines it will go for rest position that is after executing this once two three four five line it will go for a sleep it will wait for five seconds and then it will proceed further. Whenever you are giving thread.slip, you are indirectly telling to your execution to wait for that period, particular period of time. Wherever in Java you are giving thread.slip, you are telling your execution, you are telling your thread to sleep for that particular period of time and then proceed further. Your thread.sleep is provided by Java and not by Selenium web driver. Your thread.sleep is provided by Java. This is one of the interview questions that mostly fail to answer that thread.slip is derived from Java or the Selenium web driver and most of the automation engineer out there they will tell it is derived from or it has come from Selenium web driver but no your thread.slip is provided by Java and not Selenium web driver. Now if you see your thread.slip your thread is nothing but a class and your sleep is nothing but a method. So I have already explained in my previous videos that how to get method of different class into a static method of different class. So you get it by using class name dot method name. So as you can see here class is your thread and method is your sleep and that is the reason you use thread dot sleep in order to make your execution wait. Now if you see this thread dot sleep your sleep is a static method and that's the reason you write class dot method name that is thread dot sleep and you know that your sleep is static because you are directly calling it as a class name dot method name if non static you would have created an object but if you see here you are able to see here that you are directly using your method name with just class name dot method name and that is the reason your method that is sleep method is a static method this can be one of the interview question your thread dot sleep that is a sleep method it accepts the value in millisecond only let's suppose that you want your execution to wait for 10 seconds in that time you need to pass parameter as 10,000 which indicates 10 seconds as you know that one second is equal to 1000 millisecond and just because your method sleep 
accept duration only in millisecond that is the reason if you want your execution to wait for 5 seconds you have to pass parameter as 5000 in that case your execution will wait for 5 seconds and then it will go to the next line anytime you write any program and you pass the parameter as negative value let's say the time elapsed that you are passing it is in negative value let's say you are passing 10,000 but you are pa passing it in negative value that is minus 10,000 in that case your java will return exception that is illegal argument exception so when we are using thread.sleep in our program we are indirectly telling our program to do absolutely nothing in the duration that is specified in the argument if in argument I am passing 5000 millisecond that means I am telling my program to do absolutely nothing for this 5 second of time and then proceed further I will tell my program to wait for 5 seconds and then proceed further now let's go and execute the program and understand how your execution generally takes place when you are using thread.sleep and at the end of the video I'm going to talk about the demerits of using thread.sleep so I'm going to explain you thread.sleep how to use it once in Java program and once in selenium program that means I'm going to explain this thread.sleep in two ways one by writing a Java program to you and then one automation script and make you guys understand how to use thread.sleep so if you see here I'm going to write a Java program it can be uh, let's say that I'm trying to print something and you know that if you want to print something you need to give system.out.println and then inside that you need to pass something whatever you want to print it can be Manish and after that you want to print something else it can be anything you want i want to print my channel name that is software testing by mkt i want to press this print this too but before printing my software testing by mkt i want my system to relax for maybe three seconds so i will give thread dot sleep if you see here when i'm writing sleep method it is asking me to enter in millisecond if you see here so when I'm entering thread.sleep, it is only asking me to enter in millisecond. And if and just because I want my system to relax for three seconds before printing my channel name that is software testing by MKT, I would have to give my relaxation time or thread time or sleep time in 3000. So whenever you use thread.sleep, it has to be handled by either try or catch or you need to throw a declaration. You can click on any one of this that would really solve your problem so if you see here in this program i'm telling my program first to if you see here this is my main method public static void main i'm telling my system to print manish and after that i'm telling my system to wait for three seconds and after waiting for three seconds i want my system to print software testing by mkt if i run this you would see uh i'm between Manish and printing software testing by MKT, the time duration will be three seconds. If you execute this, you see that Manish got printed and after three seconds software testing by MKT got printed. If you see here in console, I want to show you this one more time to all of you. If you execute that, it has printed Manish now, but it is taking three second of time to print software testing by MKT. But in case you don't give thread.sleep, your Manish and software testing by MKT will be printed together. For that, I have I have commented my thread.sleep method and now I am trying to run this program. As you can see that, but the execution is Manish and software testing by MKT together. So this was my Java program and now let's, I have already automated a program. So I have written my program in such a way that after entering my username, I have made my application or I have made my program to wait for three seconds and that is the reason I have given the duration of 3000 millisecond. How I have automated this you don't have to worry because you will be understanding that when I will be uploading more videos on selenium. For now you just understand that if I am automating something and anywhere if I give thread.sleep there it will wait for a particular period of time that you have passed in your thread.sleep method. So if you see the here if I run the automation script it will open the website that has given after that it will click on the sign in button as you can see here and after entering your username it is waiting for three seconds before clicking on continue button now if you if you see here 
when automation script was running, when it is clicking on sign in button, I'm not doing anything. It is automated. After entering username, it is waiting for three seconds before clicking on continue button. And that is called as thread.sleep. Your thread.sleep will make your program to wait for a period of time. Now, if I remove this thread.sleep method at all, you will see that after entering username, it will immediately click on the continue button and proceed to the password page. If you see here, it has launched to the website. It has clicked on the sign in button. It has entered the username and it has clicked the continue button and it has come to the password page. It didn't wait after entering username because I removed my thread.sleep and that is how your thread.sleep works. In case you want the program that I have written, in case you want to execute the same program in your system, you can let me know in the comment section with your mail ID. I will be forwarding this program to directly to your mail ID. Now let's talk about the demerits of using thread.sleep. As you know that it will make you by using thread.sleep, it will make your execution to wait for a specified period of time that is specified in your argument. If your argument contains five seconds, it will wait for five seconds and then it will proceed further. Let's say that you are trying to automate some web page and you're trying to log in into some application. Once you have logged in, you're trying to click some element. So to load all the elements of the web page, it is taking, let's say three seconds. And now while automating your web page, you have given your thread.sleep as four seconds because you know that your web element is taking to load as three seconds. So on a safer side, you are giving four seconds of thread.sleep. You are telling your application, you are telling your program to wait for four seconds and up until my elements loads and then perform action. The action can be clicking on some element which was not visible earlier because element was not loaded. So you made your program to wait for four seconds for elements to load properly and now you're performing some action. It may be clicking some element. Now, but now you know that when you are running your automation script now, there are chances that your application is now loaded this time in just one second or maybe just two seconds but you have given duration to wait as four seconds and now your web page is loaded in just two seconds so if you see here your application was loaded in just two seconds and you have given your app program to wait for four seconds so this is a wastage of time your two seconds even though your, your web elements are totally loaded your application, your program will still load for four seconds. And this is the one of the major disadvantage of using thread.sleep. It will not get to know, thread.sleep will not get to know when your element has loaded properly or not. There are cases in which your element will load in just two seconds. There are cases your element will not load even after 10 seconds. In those cases, your execution will fail. Let's understand in this way that you gave thread.sleep as four seconds and now your whole web element was loaded properly in just two seconds and that's a wastage of two seconds as you know that but what if the application is not loaded even after 10 seconds your execution will fail there itself and that this is the these two points are one of the biggest disadvantage of using your thread.sleep if you talk about the third disadvantage of using thread.sleep it will be let's suppose that there are multiple components in your application and on each and every components of it before that you want your system to wait Let's suppose that in the login application itself, you want your before clicking on something, you want your execution to wait. You are giving thread.sleep there. Now, let's suppose that after logging into the application, again, you want to make your application to wait. Again, you want your program to wait before clicking on some element. So you need to write thread.sleep method before executing, before performing some action. So you need to write thread.sleep method each and every time you are performing some action which can be overcome by using implicit weight or explicit weight. Now, what is implicit weight or what is ex explicit weight? Don't have to worry now because now just concentrate about thread dot slip. So what I'm trying to say here is before performing any action, you before performing any action on any element, if you want your execution execution to wait, you need to write a method before that. That is thread dot sleep. You need to write thread dot sleep multiple times. How much of a time you want your execution to wait? So this is one of the biggest disadvantage of using thread dot sleep. And fourth but not the least, if you are an automation engineer or maybe a newbie Java developer, 
it is always advised to use implicit weight and explicit weight but not thread dot sleep because thread dot sleep does not give you a guarantee whether your automation script will pass or fail thread dot sleep is a method which does not guarantee your automation script it will really work or not on the other hand you can use implicit weight or explicit weight which will give you 100% result with, without wasting a millisecond period of time. Now what do you mean by implicit weight and explicit weight? You don't have to worry. I will talk about it maybe in the future video. Let me just understand what is thread or sleep. So that's all from this video guys. I hope this video was useful. If yes, give a big thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel Software Testing by MKT and please share this video with any friends. In case you have any kind of doubt, put out all your doubt in the comment section if you want to reach to me out i have added my core account twitter account gmail account facebook account instagram account telegram account all my social media accounts in the link description please check it out if you have any queries or questions regarding this video put out all your doubt in the comment section i will be commenting to each and every one of you thank you so much guys see you in the next video